Greetings, my friends. I hope I find you well today. Welcome to episode number three of our series. We are looking at prayers that break the curses. And on this episode number three, I want to focus on the curse of the seductive spirit of Jezebel that has invaded the church and has resulted in occultic like practices of prostitution, idolatry, manipulation, and even persecution. I want to read from the book of Revelation, chapter 2, verse 20. Revelation chapter 2, verse 20. It's a powerful prophecy that John writes to this church where Jesus had something specific and special to reveal. Listen to what the word of the Lord says. Jesus is writing to, to the church in Thyatira, and he says on verse 20, Nevertheless, notwithstanding, I have a few things against you because you have suffered or you have allowed that woman Jezebel, who calls herself a prophetess, to teach and to seduce my servants to commit fornication and to eat things sacrificed to idolatry. Three things that are outlined. She calleth herself a prophetess and she is being allowed to teach. And number three, she seduces the servants of God to commit fornication and to eat things sacrificed to idols. So there's a mention of the same spirit that I mentioned yesterday when we talked about seductive spirit or the spirit of seduction, which is a demonic spirit of Belial, which is also the spirit of Jezebel. And so we see that Belial or, or a spirit of uselessness, of worthlessness, works through the spirit of Jezebel to seduce the servants of God into fornication, into idolatry. So Jezebel manifests, or the spirit of Jezebel manifests itself through false teachings and a seductive spirit. And the main result of the spirit of Jezebel is to lead away, to allure, to deceive, to persuade, to disobey God. And where possible, it's a spirit of persecution. I'll explain that a little bit later on. And so the intent is to draw people away from the truth and cause them to go into error and by so doing bind them under a curse which brings the judgment of God and God says I'm going to cast Jezebel if you read further the book of Revelation chapter 2 uh, verse 22 and 23 the Bible says uh, behold I will cast her into a bed and them that commit adultery with her into great tribulation, except they repent of their deeds. And it goes further and says, And I will kill her children with death, and all the churches shall know that I am he that searcheth the reins of the heart, and I will give unto everyone of, your, of you according to your works. So God promises to judge her, even to kill her children, because this spirit, as you shall see when I will share with you later on, uh, the man who married the daughter of Jezebel also suffered from the same consequences. So this spirit is generational. It is passed from one generation to the other. And so, this is the judgment of the Lord upon those who allow themselves to be seduced by the teachings of Jezebel. And so, fornication and adultery will always be judged by the Lord. 
those who commit adultery or commit fornication. The Bible says in Hebrews chapter 13, verse 4, marriage is honorable among all and the bed undefiled. But fornicators and adulterers, God will judge. Let me tell you, my friends, you may be enjoying it now. You may be going out and sleeping around with other men's wives and sleeping around with other women's wives and thinking you are the man, you are the hero. You cannot be stopped. You are the conqueror, you are the lion, you are the king, you are the emperor. You call yourself all these names. But let me tell you, God will judge you. And great is the God who judges you. He says, I will kill your children. I will destroy your family. So if you go out and destroy other people's families, God says, I will destroy you. Because look at it, my friends. Marriage is under attack the world over like never before. Divorce has become so acceptable, it's not even something to talk about. It's expected that one in every three marriages will end in divorce. And this spirit of Jezebel, which is a seducing spirit, draws people into whoredom and adultery, which brings about the judgment of God. And if you define the word whoredom, or adultery or prostitution, which are sins that are under whoredom, it means prostitution. It means you are married to one husband, but you go about sleeping with other men. Spiritually, it also means you pledge to be a worshiper of God, but in your practices, you go about practicing other foreign practices that are not taught in the word of God. You are teaching and practicing error. And therefore, you are faithless. You are unworthy before God. You are an idolat idolatrous generation. And so to go after whoredoms or to be a whore means to be a faithless, unworthy, and idolatrous person. In fact, there's another powerful word I discovered as I was researching this, which is debauchery. And to debauchery means to seduce from chastity, to lead someone away from virtue of excellence into a corrupt and intemperate lifestyle of sensuality. So many of us are being debauchered, led into this lifestyle of intemperance. And so there you have it, my friend. The spirits of wardom, the spirits of prostitution, the spirits of debauchery, they are working under the strong man called Belial. And so we see in our churches, we see in our communities, extreme indulgence in sensuality. And to be sensual simply means to be fleshy, to be carnal, to be deficient in morals, and to be a person who is less spiritual and um, at, at best it's to be irreligious. You don't, have, you don't want to have anything to do with religion. You actually look at it with contempt because you know your lifestyle and the way you're living your life is not right. So allow me to take time to just break down some of the characteristics I've just mentioned above about uh, prostitution and some of the characteristics of this spirit of Jezebel. So, so prostitution, both, both the sexual immorality act of going after someone who's not your husband and having affairs with other women that are not your wife, or even the spiritual infidelity that we talk about when we run away from God. It has become very rampant in church. And if you go back to the book of Kings, um, I think it's chapter 9, 
you will hear that Jezebel was a vain woman who was accustomed to achieving her own interests through seduction and sometimes even through persecution. And so in the Bible, the term prostitution means to be an infidel, both in marriage and spiritually. When a person is not faithful to God, they are prostituting themselves. And Jesus said, no one can serve two masters. So Jezebel practiced sexual prostitution of betraying her husband. And she also practiced sorcery, which is a betrayal of the God of Israel. So this spirit of Jezebel is entering modern churches through people who are not living a life of holiness. They are doubling up in holiness as well as in sin. They are pastors and leaders in the churches uh, and other people as well and leaders in general that we must be very cautious about and not place in places where they should minister. I know we are all flawed sinners, but the person in charge of any work of God in the church of God needs to be living a life of holiness. You cannot be living a sinful life and still be a Bible teacher, a Bible worker, a pastor, an elder, a deacon, and someone who does the work of God. A person who is in sin especially the scene of fornication and prostitution, is to be put aside and not allowed to lead. They need to be restored first. And we must do this with love and patience because God says, I gave Jezebel time to repent. So God expects those people with this spirit to repent. And so besides the physical immorality, there is also the spiritual prostitution. There are many church members who are rebellious towards the community where they gather, the community of faith that they interact with. They criticize, they attack, they ridicule, they belittle. And such, such people often hope and skip from one church to the other seeking where they can find someone who pleases them or someone they can attack. So they are like storm chasers. They search for where the Spirit of God is working and they come to disrupt. Every day they are looking for a church, a pastor who they can attack. And when they are not satisfied with whatever is happening at that church, they create intrigues and they undermine the leadership and create havoc. That, my friends, is the spirit of prostitution of Jezebel. Now, the, the, the second characteristic of this spirit, as we noted, is a spirit of idolatry. The Bible tells us that Jezebel worshipped idols and she had an army of prophets. More than 850 prophets were serving under Baal, and these were former Israelites, people who knew how to worship the true God of heaven. They had defected to this false worship of Jezebel, so she hires from the church into her system of worship, which was a foreign system of foreign gods and idols. Nowadays, we, we rarely see this kind of practice where people have temples and grooves they go to. Yes, they might be there, but our modern idolatry goes beyond curved images. Idolatry is something that takes the place of God in our hearts. So you will see that there are many practices in our day that are drawing us away from God because this is a seducing spirit. It works clandestine, it deceives, and when it works, we saw yesterday when I read to you that this spirit, when it is practicing itself, it uses persuasion to lead people away. It uses false promises and allurements. So sometimes it dangles a carrot of celebrity. You know, the desire to be celebrated and to be obsessed over other people. It's a seductive spirit. The whole culture of celebrity is a spirit of Jezebel that draws people away from God to significant, in quotes, people. Sometimes this spirit works with wealth and material possession. Those who possess money and material possessions 
must be very careful not to be influenced by this spirit. We saw it yesterday that Nabal, as rich as he was, and he could afford to spare some food for David and his men, but he became so selfish with his material means that he was prepared to see David and his men starve to death. There are many people amongst us who are gifted, who are talented, who are endowed with so much resources. But what are they doing with them? They are buying themselves material possessions, more houses upon more houses. And God's work and God's church is languishing in poverty. There are ministries out there that are struggling to get resources, but someone is sitting on billions of dollars, runs or pounds, and they never think about the work of God. So, so, so wealth and material possession becomes a trap, a, a, a place of bondage. And maybe that's why David prayed and said, Lord, give me enough that I may not starve and don't give me too much lest I forget and curse your name. We also see that there's a culture of social influencers, the celebrities, individuals who are idolized for their social influence and their presence and their, their power or their charm, this can easily play into the spirit of Jezebel. Sometimes the technology that we now have can be a powerful system that is an idol to many people, such that people would rather search Google than search the Bible for answers. People would rather search the AI platforms for answers than to kneel down and pray and study for answers. This technology can be an idol. Some people prefer to browse Facebook and, and watch videos on YouTube than study their Bibles. Friends, I'm talking about the possibility that we are living under a pop culture where icons are idolized, icons in music, icons in sports, icons in athletics, icons in politics. These can easily become our idols that we worship. Political figures the leaders who lead us. We place them in a position where they cannot make a mistake and we defend them even with our own lives. What about the self-image of those who are obsessed with their appearance and self-image? Are you not making your body an idol and therefore opening up the space for the spirit of Jezebel and the spirit of Belial to enter you and possess you in that state of self-esteem uh, and uh, self-worth. Sometimes it's our success and our achievements. We idolize these things of success. We display our icons of success. And we often spend money to show that we actually are worth what we have achieved. We want to display and showcase our symbols of success could this not be a form of idolatry? Sometimes it's our career. Sometimes it's our work. People prioritize their work and their careers to the point of becoming an idol in their lives. You would rather do what your boss wants than what God wants you to do. You are no longer available to serve God, not even to look after your family. You are now into so much of your career that you have left the basic tenets of what a mother and a father should be. Possibly, it could be our nationalism. The, we idolize our country to the extreme extent that we are so blinded of our own faults and we think that there's no better birth than to be born in the country where you were born in and you think you are better people and your politics and your economy and your way of life is more superior than those who come from that other place. We look at our sports idols and we idolize athletes. We place them on pedestals and we follow their every move and we treat them like they are idols and we invest in so much significant time 
and emotion in following these people. This, my friends, is modern idolatry which opens up the spirit of Jezebel to come in. People who prioritize sports events above other aspects of their lives, making this an idol of entertainment and leisure. Coaches and commentators and other personalities within the sports industry are idolized by so many fans. They are celebrated as if they are gods. Individuals idolize the achievements in sports and records that are being kept as world records. Fans collect sports merchandise and memorabilia and um, they idolize the symbols and the logos. They buy t-shirts, they buy caps and wristbands and shoes. These, these are things that we immense ourselves into a culture that idolizes certain lifestyles. Young athletes idolize the old and the retired. We almost worship them and we aspire to be like them in our achievements. And fans who actually engage in superstitious rituals and behaviors during games, believing that they can influence the outcome of the actions. This, my friend, is a spirit of Jezebel and a spirit of Belial. And I want you to note that most people do this sometimes even not aware that they are being possessed by the spirit of Jezebel. This is because this spirit of Jezebel is a manipulating spirit. Jezebel herself as a person was very manipulative. She wanted everything to be done according to her way and she would stop at nothing. She even convinced her husband to abandon the God of Israel and to worship Baal and to establish temples and grooves for Baal. And moreover, she was very envious. Jealousy ruled in the heart of Jezebel. One time she schemed a lie to have a man uh, who was called Naboth to be killed simply because her husband wanted Naboth's vineyard to plant cabbages. They wanted to make a very expensive investment of generations for Naboth and his generations that came after him and before him, they wanted to cheapen it to a field of cabbages and vegetables. That's what the spirit of Jezebel does. It takes the expensive and makes it cheap. So Naboth and his sons were killed. And she took the life and the property of an innocent man. And so a manipulative person lies and engages force and intimidation to achieve what they desire. They, be, they betray or they stab others in the back to seek revenge for those who refuse to do their bidding. Those possessed by this spirit of Jezebel will hate everything good that is done by somebody and they will work insidiously through committees, through uh, 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 structures of organizations to make sure they dismantle and dislodge the person who's living a godly life. The spirit of Jezebel has entered our churches through such people who want to control everything. One of the other characteristics of the spirit of Jezebel is that of persecution. This woman actually persecuted the prophets of God to the point that many of them had to run for their lives and some were killed. Elijah himself was threatened. And regardless of Elijah being a powerful prophet of God, she had to run for his life. Because he spoke against her husband. This spirit of Jezebel can be observed in our churches today where people are persecuted by their own brothers and sisters for speaking the truth in righteousness. There are churches where everything is, is already established that when one person, one man or woman of God proposes changes, 
they are persecuted and they face external persecution from people or situations that they, they, they find themselves in. They, and, and they say, you cannot change anything in this building or in this church. The, the, the fifth um, aspect of this spirit is that it operates in the church. As we read in our opening text, Revelation chapter 20, chapter 2, verse 20 to 23, Jezebel operates in the church. She is described as a prophetess who leads the church members into sexual immorality and into the worship of idols. The letter warns the church to repent from following Jezebel's teachings and to turn back to the true teachings of Christ because failure to do so would result in serious consequences as, 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 as we read from the book of Revelation. And so Jesus says, we must take heed of this spirit. And so my friends, I want to pray with someone today. I want to pray with someone who says, I see the rampant carnality in the church and this indeed is the spirit of Jezebel. Because Jezebel is not working alone. She is working with Belial to draw people into abominable sins that include sodomy and homosexuality, incest and rape. Perversion of all kinds are now coming into the church because Jezebel works through manipulation. And if she cannot manipulate the situation, she works through intimidation. And if she cannot get you through intimidation, she will persecute you and hunt for your life. And so, if the spirit of Jezebel cannot manipulate people, it will definitely intimidate them. And Jezebel hates the apostles of God who teach the truth, and she hates the prophets of God. The greatest threat to Jezebel in our church today as it was before is the influence of true servants of God, those who preach the truth and maintain a standard of holiness that only calls God to be worshipped. That is what Jezebel hates and therefore this spirit at attacks those men and women of God in order to move them out of the way and to allow itself to operate without any restriction. You see, my friends, the Word of God has already warned us that the spirit of Jezebel masquerades as a person with prophetic gifts and can therefore be seen teaching, but in their teaching, they are misleading people into immorality. And so today I want to pray with you, my friend, and say, Father, in the name of Jesus, your true prophets and prophetesses must be revealed. Otherwise, Jezebel will lead us into immorality. Father, I pray that you may keep your children from being led into sin by someone who masquerades as your messenger. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray that the spirit of Jezebel, this seducing spirit that is causing rampant destruction in the church, in Africa, and the whole world, I pray that you may rebuke it in the name of Jesus. I pray that your word may be true that you taught us in the book of Hebrews chapter 13, that marriage is honorable and the bed is undefiled. Father, I pray that may you help your women and your men, your servants, and your, and your, and your people to, to, to maintain the spirit of holiness, to keep sexual intimacy between a husband and a wife, and to stop any casual and illicit sex, because that is driven by the spirit of Jezebel. Father, you taught us in your, in your, in your word that there are painful consequences and influences of the spirit of Jezebel. You taught us, O oh Lord, that we must run from this spirit and we must rebuke it because if we don't, our children will be affected by it. We saw how Jehoram married the daughter of Jezebel 
and they too were affected by gross immorality in their lives. And as a result, Jehoram in the book of 2 Corinthians chapter 21 died from a painful disease because of his disobedience. I am praying therefore, Father, today that may our children enter into godly marriages, that they may not be unequally yoked with people who have a spirit of Jezebel who will draw their lives to hell. Lord, lead your children to be influenced by your spirit and to shun the spirit of Jezebel because it will lead them into sexual immorality and fornication. Father, I pray that many in our continent and our countries have fallen prey to this wicked spirit. And it is my prayer that you may fill our nations with people who no longer live under the scene of Jezebel but are living in purity. Father, cause your people to stand for purity. Let your people lead these nations that they are living in to repentance and out of immorality and to turn to you for purity and for dedication. Father, in a special way, I pray that may you drive this spirit of Jezebel out of men and women who seek your face. For there are many who are committing sinful acts because of this spirit that cannot be satisfied. Many men and women are filled with an insatiable appetite for sex. And this sinful spirit has caused brothels in South Africa and Southern Africa to be built where unspeakable acts of evil and wickedness are done and people are drunk and many have died from sexually transmitted diseases because of this spirit. It has risen and has caused a lot of promiscuity among our young people. They think it's, a, it's an object of honor to be immoral, not realizing that there is a price they will pay for sinful prostitution and homosexuality and perversion of humanity. In the holy name of God, I pray today, asking that you may bind this spirit in our countries, in our cities, and cast it out in the name of Jesus. Break the hold of Jezebel off your people. Loose those who are in captivity and turn them back into purity. Father, I pray, according to your word, because you said whoever divorces his wife, let him give him a certificate of divorce. And yet you further taught us, Father, that whoever divorces his wife except for sexual immorality causes her to commit adultery. And whoever marries that woman who is divorced commits adultery. There are many amongst us whose relationships are not pure because they divorced and remarried against your will. And Belial seeks to destroy our divine institution of marriage by corrupting it through unwise choices. Father, I pray that may you keep our relationships pure and let us fight to save marriage in our continent and in our generation. Father, I pray in a special way. Help me to understand. Help my friends to understand that those who proceed, that those things we, we speak that proceed out of our mouths and out of our hearts and out of our minds, those are the things that defile us. Help us to keep a pure heart Help us to keep pure thoughts because adulteries, fornications, theft, false witnesses and adulteries and blasphemies and all forms of wickedness proceed out of our hearts. We speak out of the abundance of our minds and our hearts. Therefore, Father, we ask that may you turn our hearts towards you and keep our mouths pure 
we are asking that you may teach us the importance of renewing our mind according to Romans chapter 12 verse 2 that you may keep us from falling as Jude has said Father I pray that may your word teach us to retain a knowledge of you because if we don't keep you in our lives and we consider you a God in our lives but we reduce you to be an absent landlord who is not even concerned with us we shall end up giving ourselves to the best minds to do those things that are not fitting being filled with all unrighteousness because we've removed you from amongst us and that's what the spirit of Jezebel wants so that we are filled with immorality and wickedness and covetousness and maliciousness. We are full of envy and murder and strife and deceit and evil-mindedness and we are seeking for new ways and innovative ways to sin. We have become whisperers and backbiters and haters of God, violent, proud and boastful, and we invent evil things and are disobedient to parents. Father, we are praying for this generation of our children that may they honor you as their God and that they may shun the works of flesh which are adultery, fornication, uncleanliness, idolatry, sorcery, hatred, contentions and jealousies and that there may be no outburst of wrath or selfish ambitions and dissensions and heresies Teach us to live by the power of the Holy Spirit and that we may do the works of the Spirit and not fulfill the desires of the flesh. Father, as I conclude this, 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 this message, I am asking that may you give meaning to my life because many of us desire to live a life of glory. Yet many of us, as we lose our direction because of the trials and the problems we face in this world, we also lose meaning and we devalue ourselves. I pray today that may you help your children not to be controlled by their bodies, but to mortify every desire for the wrong kind of sex and that those who are single may remain faithful to you until you bind them to their husbands and or their, their wives. I pray that you may help us not to be greedy because by desiring to be rich, to be famous and to have things our way, many of us have ended up worshipping idols. Father, teach us to abstain from fornication Help us to see and understand and discern the false teachings of Jezebel in amongst our churches. Father, examine our hearts and know our hearts and see if there's any spirit of Jezebel in our hearts. For we repent and we are pleading for your forgiveness. And if that evil spirit has somewhere crept into my heart or into my family or into my family members. I pray that today, as we listen to this prayer, you may break that spirit and remove it in Jesus' name. Reveal it to me, reveal it to my family, reveal it to my church and cast it out of our lives. Father, I pray that my love for you and my family's love for you and my colleagues' love for you and your purity may prevail. For we ask and pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Thank you so much, my friends, for listening to this message. I pray that you may join me on the fourth episode of this series of prayers that break curses god bless you my friends if you have any question or comment do remember to get in touch with me via whatsapp on the number plus plus two seven eight two triple three zero five one two. the number again 
plus two seven eight two triple three zero five one two alternatively you can check us on melview broadcasting network on facebook youtube on twitter on tiktok and get in touch with us god bless you amen